One of the things I predict we won't see during the Rams-Buccaneers game is Bruce Arians slapping the helmet off and or throwing an elbow <laughs> into the shoulder pad of and or pushing the chest of a player who's doing something that Bruce Arians doesn't want him to do because he was fined $50,000 for his interaction with Andrew Adams on Sunday against the Eagles when Adams was trying to pull an Eagles player off the pile after a muffed punt by Jalen Rager. Arians was trying to keep the foul from being called because you can't pull an opposing player off the pile when they're trying to get the football. Arians fined 50000 Here he is yesterday addressing the news that came down just moments before his press conference. I guess the league uh, has fined you $50,000 for your encounter there on the sideline with Andrew Adams. Um, do you plan to appeal it? Uh, do you have anything else to say about what you've been trying to do there? Uh, I'll appeal it. And, uh, it ain't got nothing to do with the game, so we're good. That was all he had to say about it. And I don't know why he's appealing it, Chris. He doesn't have a union. There's no independent arbitrator. The league made the decision. It's just going through the motions, I think. They're not going to change their mind on this. No, no way. They're not going to wipe this. it away. I don't, right. I don't know why you just don't write the check and move on. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we talked about it earlier in the week. I think there's a bright line that you can't cross, regardless of what he's trying to do here. Right, right. You just can't do that. You can't do that. We, we, we have not seen that in the presence of cameras by an NFL coach in a very long time. No. And, and the NFL needs to send a message to the coaches at every level of the sport where that line is. You can't do it. And I think that's what this really was. It was a message. To the extent the NFL believes that everything it does sets the tone for football at every level, that's why that fine was imposed. So that youth-level coaches remember that there is a line there now that you can't cross. Yeah, I think so. I mean, if you're going to have taunting and, and, and claim the whole taunting issue and all that is about being role models for the young kids, and yes, this is a part of it. No, no question. You know? and, and again, yeah, it's, it's very rare. Uh, I, this, this stuff kind of went out of the football DNA and culture when I was, I'm going to say, high school, you know, late 90s, where it was like starting to be a no-no. You know, even grabbing a player by the face mask and going, what the hell are you doing? And blah, blah, blah. Like that started like, whoa, whoa, he did that? You know, that was becoming, you know, very dicey. So we, you're right. We haven't seen anything like this in a long time. Like I said, I think yesterday or Monday a little bit, if there's one guy that can get away for, with it a little bit, it's him. You know, I, I still look at that play and just go, you know, one of the re like Adams reaction, I think, tells you a little bit about like Bruce Arians and the fact like he, Adams, like he knew he was wrong. And he's like, I know my coach is psycho. I probably deserve that right hook to the head. And he kind of went about his business. He wasn't even like shocked or anything about it. Uh, but so what else are you going to do? No, as a I know. Player? You know, I've had people say to me, yeah. oh, what, you know, the yeah, player should have kicked his ass. And, you know, some, somebody asked me yesterday, what would Rodney Harrison have done if Belichick did it? Well, Rodney, I mean, you, you, you're you part of this, this structure where, there's a certain amount of abuse that there, you there's take. Right. It's, there's it's right. an inherently abusive relationship. It Usually it's verbal. Yeah. But uh, you, what are you going to do? You're going to beat up the coach because the coach smacked you in the helmet? No, you're, you're exactly going right. against everything you've been you've been led to believe your role is. Uh, you're you are in a subordinate position. So I don't think any I don't think any coach would take a real risk that they're going to get their ass kicked by a player by doing that. The players are wired to take it. That, yeah. that, that's all the more reason for that bright line to be there. Yeah, no, I think you're right. The players are going to take it. You're right. Most guys in the, in the NFL team, especially if you did something stupid, I think a lot of them could take that kind of abuse. I do. Not to say it's right, but I think a lot of them, you know, to your point, the culture of, you know, the NFL and football is a little bit, you know, Sergeant General-ish. And you take your orders and commands, and sometimes you get yelled at and MF, and whatever, and you got to take your lumps that way. I think what you said is the real thing. I think uh, the, the modern-day really good coach has some players like a Rodney Harrison on his team that police those things themselves and don't let them go down. And I, I think the Bucks have some of those guys. Just maybe they weren't around the scrum there to do that. But I think that's no, more than normal, or at least the thing you see more now than ever, is that you know veteran, mature presence who's totally bought into the coach and the organization. He's the guy that goes there and gets in the face of Adams and goes, "Dude, what the hell are you doing?" And you bear hug him and you get him away and go, "This isn't you know you give him the speech that way." That's usually how it goes down. But it was a little weird because it was right by the sidelines. Arian was so close that even with his part partially torn Achilles, he could get over there and, and throw a right hook. Hey, it, it was the, the claim that Urban Meyer kicked Josh Lambeau in a late August practice with no video to support it that 
ultimately, I believe, was the final straw for him in Jacksonville, even though the Jaguars have tried to deny it. And I think back to other interactions we've seen on camera. Remember a few years ago, back before Brian Kelly developed a spontaneous Southern accent, when he would turn like red <laughs> yeah. and purple right. and blue and scream? And he, he wasn't... I don't know if he did the face mask grab. I think one time there may have been a face mask grab. I can't remember that as much but as the fact that he was in your that face. Yeah, he went. He went Joseph's multi color Technicolor dream coat all on his face, right. yelling at yelling at at somebody. And we thought that's that may be a little bit too far here, Coach. That may be especially for guys who aren't getting paid. Yeah, he may be kids. going a little too far. Right. So uh, so there's a line. And, and I think the easiest line to police is thou shalt not lay hands or feet yeah. or grab face masks of your player. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.